Welcome to the Old Glory Renovations Podcast, the podcast about home renovations from the home renovations experts. Hosted by Rob Hefner and Mike Landry, the Old Glory Renovations Podcast wants to show you how to enjoy your home renovations. Rob's show taught me a lot. Choosing the right contractor for the job doesn't have to be scary, and home renovations are built to enjoy and be fun. I got so much more for my money. Now, here are your hosts for the Old Glory Renovation Podcast, Rob Hefner and Mike Landry. Hey guys, welcome to Old Glory Renovations Podcast Show today. I'm your host, Mike Landry. We've got Rob Hefner, the king of contracting in with us. We're going to be talking about some things that represent a tremendous amount of value to you as buyers, but it's also revolutionizing the remodeling industry to empower the customer to be in complete control. Rob, what's happening, brother? It's a beautiful afternoon. You know, we uh, we started this company out looking at exactly what we needed to do, not from what we wanted, but from what customers needed. Now, I've been in the business for a long, long time, and I've seen people abused in a whole lot of different ways. I've quit companies because they made that a habit. And when I was thinking about becoming a general contractor, I sat back and said, okay, what does the industry not do well? Why does it have such a bad reputation? Well, there's one thing, so much money up front. When you put money up front, you don't know if they're even going to show up the next day. How many horror stories have we all had about, I gave them 50% up front, never heard from them again. Uh, let me let me set this up. Okay. Go ahead. So, because when, when you explain the way your system works, it's it's going to shock people, okay? So this is what you're you're up against. You know, you and I have been have been builders in this industry or modelers for decades, okay? And and here's the problem. And I agree with everything you're saying. One, you're going to have five contractors come in cuz you want to get multiple bids cuz you want to get the best deal you can get. And you're going to negotiate. So your project, your little kitchen project is $50,000. That's your budget, okay? So by the time these guys get through and you spend all this time you're getting bids for thirty-five thousand, all the way to seventy-five thousand. Now you're not only thoroughly confused, you're shocked. How is this even remotely possible? It's just a kitchen, right? And you pretty much know what you want. So to top that off, you and your husband are sitting at the table, or your family, and you're trying to figure out which one of these guys you're going to try to to do business with. And then you're looking at thirty percent. 40%, 50%. They want half your money up front to start. So you are in total fear. You don't know what to do. How are you going to solve that problem? Well, that's just the first problem. Now, there's remember, there's three big problems with contracting. That's the first one, and you stated it very, very clearly. The other one is when they show up to work, how do you know they're going to come back the next day? How many times have you heard somebody saying, ah, oh, well, they worked for a week and then they disappeared and didn't come back? It happens all the time. That's that's always a concern in finding the contractor you can trust to be there when there's work to be done. The last one of the three is whether it's that $35,000, $50,000, or $70,000 bid, you never know how much of that went to what. How do you know you're getting your money's worth if you don't know where they spent the money? So with those three major problems, those three things that are the pinch points, so to speak, the friction points between homeowners and the remodeling industry, I started out building a company that was designed not based on what I want to do as a remodeler, not based on how everybody else is doing it, but designed to address those three pinch points more than anything else. So at, at the end of the day, it's it's not simple getting here, but it's not entirely complicated the way we do it. First off, the first big question, right? So much money down. And where does this bid come from? I provide detailed bids. You can check my pricing. Uh, all the numbers are there. Everything's technically there. It's all good for you. And when you get a bid, you know exactly what it's going to be. Takes away that insecurity at the end of the job. But wait a minute. This is okay. So most bids, right, that the contractors are getting are for, from subcontractors, and they're turnkey. So it'll say paint, which is labor and materials, right? 
that's just one big number. Right. Just one total big number, like three thousand or five thousand dollars, right? And the the uh cabinets and the flooring, it all comes in in one big number. Okay. How is your system different than that? For paint, for example, if I put a bid for paint, three thousand dollars, you threw out that number. The bid sheet for the paint, because it's line item bids, you'll see he, each detail. The bid sheet for paint will say this many man hours to get the paint done, this many gallons of paint at this price, this much in extras, things like tape and plastic and paper to keep everything connected, and this much to throw away the trash. And at the same time, it shows exactly how much I'm making on the job as well. But you're also um, providing an hourly rate for the labor. Correct. Okay. It's not some arbitrary number. Everything is specified in terms of exactly how long it's going to take at an hourly rate, the specific material dynamics and cost, the actual markup for all of that. And um, the, the, the interesting thing about this is the way that it's actually invoiced. So let's say, for instance, that you have a kitchen that you need to demo, right? That's the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rip out the kitchen. Right. That's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's no materials. There's no, you know, uh, there's, there's no cost for other than the labor that's going into it. What's your deposit when you sign that contract to remodel that kitchen? How much does that money, uh, how, how much money does that customer put up for demolition? Nothing. Zero. Zero is pretty much nothing. You and mean you're not taking 30%, 40, 50% up front? No, because success in this industry success in any industry depends on trust and confidence between me as a uh, as a seller and my clients as buyers so i'm going to go in there and go to work when i need material de- depending on when in the process i need it i may have to have self, some help carrying that forward but in a general job i go to work i bill every thursday and I'll order the material on Wednesday, and here's the invoice on Thursday. If you want to copy the receipts, I can give them to you. Okay, now, to be clear, you're billing the client weekly for completed labor and material. And nothing and more. And nothing more. And nothing That's more. That's based on progress of work on the job. Now, in the event that there's some materials that need to be ordered on the beginning – because they have timelines, then you will collect that material cost to get that bought and get it ordered. But other than that, if it's just a demo and then moving forward, literally no money down. It, that's absolutely correct. Most of my jobs, 90% of them are no, no money down. I'm building a deck that has $9,800 worth of material. That $9,800, because of the lead time to get it, I have to get that up front because I have to pay for it now and get it in three weeks. But if it weren't for that, I wouldn't do it. If I could get it in three days, he'd pay for it the week that I when have When you order need it. it. When I order When you it. need it, yes. right? Yes. So, and here's the other thing. His guys are always on the job and scheduled to start the work and get it completed. There's no, you know, I'm, they're gone for three weeks. I got something else to do because he doesn't subcontract out 90% of the labor. They work for him. I'm starting a job hopefully next week uh, where I'm having to subcontract out some of the flooring just because we're in a big hurry to get the job done. I'm still going to have one of my guys. I have 13 guys that work for me and I keep, I pay them every Friday. One of those guys will be on that job site, even though I have a subcontractor there at the time. So there will always be one of my guys there. It's my job as the business owners and manager, me and my team, to make sure material shows up when it has to and the work gets done on time. But there'll never be a pause because, oh, I can't get this part or that part or that piece of wood because those things that are hard to find, I'm going to order them before I start because I want in and out of your house as quickly as possible. I never want to have to go back. Okay, let me ask you this question. So of all the projects and all the variety of projects that you do, because you will do home repairs and you will do major construction. So Absolutely. The, a lot of remodel contractors, like when I was a remodeler, I wouldn't touch anything for less than 50000 bucks. okay? 
So what is the starting point at which you will look at something and go provide services? Budgetarily. Budgetarily, I want to say that I'm in the 20000 and up range. Uh, at the same time, I do a lot of work less than that. When things get slow, i got to find something to keep the guys busy because they depend on me for a paycheck every week. Correct. So I have to get them get them working. Uh, but I want to be up in that 20000 range. Uh, that's kind of a, a sweet spot uh, with the way I do business. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't drag on too long, and I can get in and get out and go on to the next one and leave my customers happy with the job done right and a clear understanding of what they spent and what they got for it. Okay, so the other thing that I want to talk about is most people feel like they're just way overspending. How much... But with this level of detail and specificity, I mean, accountants love doing business with you because of that. <laughs> oh my! Because you can see every penny, where it's going, exactly how much time it took. Because you're billing hourly, the customer's only paying weekly, so you don't have half of their half of their annual or life savings right. in your pocket, praying you're going to show up and finish half the job before you ask for more money. So this is literally billed once a week based on job progress. Correct. With complete specificity. That's it, that that is you're going to you're going to give a ton of remodelers a heart attack when they when they have to compete against this. I'm just telling you. Now, how much value in terms of buying buying power do you think that your customers are gaining by this particular open disclosure process? If you think of it in terms of confidence, knowing what you're getting, uh, because that fear of the unknown Keep in mind, I'm a contractor, a remodeler. I sell stuff that people don't know how it's done. They know what they want it to look like. They don't know what it costs or how to put it together, but damn it, I want it done now. It, it's, it's an awkward dynamic. So developing that sense of confidence between me and my homeowner so that they can look at the detail that I provide, they can meet my job leads and know that that guy's going to be on their house until the end. Uh, there's a great deal of value in knowing that you're not getting shafted and knowing that you're not being mistreated or abused or anything like that. Well, one thing that you do is you have a rigid schedule. Those, the, your, your guys are going to be on that job site every week to get that, that job done and to provide you with satisfaction. And basically one of the things that you're, you're one of your, slogans, I would think, uh, are empowering our customers with control and predictability. It, it, you get to sleep at night. You get to enjoy the process of improving your home with great confidence. You have complete disclosure. And I'll tell you the one thing that you guys have that uh, I'd say 90 plus, maybe 96% of the contractors in, in Houston that are doing remodeling do not carry general liability insurance. And they tell you they do, but if you don't get a copy from the insurance company via email f with your address on it, you are not covered until they can prove you're covered. Now, you guys, tell me how cheap that is. I, I I would rather not talk about how much I pay for insurance every year. It's, it's insane. But I pay a That's lot. why they don't carry it. I, yeah, I, I pay a lot. You mentioned the homeowners retaining control, all right? That's kind of a big deal to me because budgets can get kind of tight and you may want A, B, C, and D done, but you're not sure your budget's going to get there. And I go take a look at it and I'm like, uh, it's going to be kind of snug. So I can do the contract for items A, B, C, and D and they're listed A, B, C, and D and with a separate worksheet for each one. And we complete A first. And we complete B second. And if you don't have enough money left in your budget to go to the C, because I had a client, we were working and working and working, and her AC in the house she was living in went out. Cost her $13,000, and all of a sudden her budget for what she was doing with me was gone, and we had to say, oh, you know, the last two items we were going to do? Can't do it. Let's, uh, let's move forward. But she had control of what we were working on, and she had control of her budget. Now, <clears throat> the key with that is 
you're getting you're not getting a paint bid for three thousand dollars. And if the painter, if my painter at my old company uh, thought that you were going to be tedious to work with or picky, he'd change his bid from <laughs> three thousand to five thousand because of the pain in the ass budget. Okay, and and I'm telling you, this eliminates all of that capability because I'm going to put down. We've got uh, forty hours in paint, and we have. 40 hours in paint, period. That's what you pay for. That's what you got. It is a open secret. I've talked about it with other contractors. The nicer the house, the higher the price. There is a, a rich tax inside of 610. Uh, you go into some places, it's going to cost twice as much. I bid on a ceiling job, sight unseen. And uh, my painter was going to go do it for me. He's a great guy. I don't use him for everything. Most of the paint we do ourselves, but like a whole house, I bring in a subcontractor for. Uh, this was a ceiling. I couldn't get to it. He gave me a price of $1,200. Okay, cool. Good to go. It's kind of a big ceiling. And uh, I said, okay, I'll send you the address. I got the address and sent it to him. He said, no. Thirty five hundred. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's why you having your own guys on staff that do a lot of the labor and a lot of the, the you know you've got all the trades, but in house. And that's what's revolutionized the ability for you to actually execute this type of plan. You know, most contractors are not going to put guys on payroll. They're, they're, they're just not going to do it. But it's the only way to maintain control, predictable quality. And get it done as fast as possible. It's the only way to control the customer experience because growing this business is not flashy flyers and that kind of stuff. It's clients talking to future clients, past clients talking to future clients. That's how I want to grow the business. And if I don't leave every one of my clients absolutely thrilled with the job we did, I want any one of my past clients when they're sitting at the bar and there, and the guy sitting next to him is saying, "Man, the remodelers come in. I got to do this." And he's like, "Hey, you need to call Rob. All right, take all the worry about it away. Take all the pain away about it. You're in control of the situations. You just call him, talk to him, see what he can do for you." Okay, so how many on, on in this system? How many of your clients or your projects come in at or below budget? At well, all right. None at, of my projects. At or below budget, because a lot of them creep, okay? Well, well, projects can creep, but uh, my projects will never go more than 10% over my estimate. The 80% are, are at or below budget, and 15 to 20% are below budget. Because remember, I invoice based on the number of hours we're in the house, and the material we purchase. So, and you have the material invoice with the detailed cost. I had ten of this, two of that, five of this right. at this price from the from the supplier. Correct. They're seeing that detail, and then the labor separated out that says we estimated you know thirty hours for labor, and we've got twenty six. So it ends up being less than it I originally bid. Uh, the, the, You're not keeping the extra if you didn't earn no, it. No, no. That's because, my point. No, because I, the business model is not based on maximizing income with every transaction. That's the thing about traditional contractors. Because there's so much risk in this industry, they have to make money every time and make as much as possible every time because they know they're going to lose on one out of ten, one out of seven. It's just the laws of the game. I'm sharing the risk with the homeowner. I'm also sharing the benefits of it with the homeowner. Well, and here's the other thing. You're, since you have guys on staff, future needs that are nuisance needs that can't command an entire team go out and fix a door or make some simple trim or put some hardware in, you provide that future support to those clients when they need it because they entrusted you with their remodel. So now you have a team that will provide some handyman services as needed for pay. But the fact that they're available and you have predictable quality with a trusted company, you're building a long-term relationship and future that lasts a lifetime. Well, that's the idea. I, I want to be my client's first recommendation to their friends and their first choice moving forward. 
and I have to prove myself on every single job. I have to prove how, how good we are technically in the work that we do, and I have to constantly demonstrate the integrity that this company relies on. Trust, confidence, and integrity. We're going to do the right thing. Old Glory Renovations. Trust, confidence, and honesty. Rob, you're a retired Army vet? That is correct. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. I'm Air Force, so... Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, you can find them at uh, Old Glory Texas. That's uh, oldglorytx.com, or you can call them at 281 546 8836. 281 546 8836. We're talking with Rob Hefner. He is the contractor. And I'm going to tell you, this is an incredible company. They are doing something that the consumers are going to absolutely love and drive all the competitors. Uh, to insane asylums. We're going to run out to a break. Stay tuned. We've got some more stuff coming up right away. We'll be right back with more of the Old Glory Renovations podcast. Old Glory Renovations revolutionized the industry to put the customer in total control. There's little to no deposit to begin work, weekly invoicing only on completed work, weekly itemized labor and material cost for invoicing, eliminating wasting your money with overpriced turnkey estimates. Their trade labor are on staff and not subcontractors. They don't leave projects sitting dormant for days or weeks or waiting on a subcontractor. They have proper general liability insurance coverage. Call Old Glory Renovations now and take control while maximizing your buying power. Old Glory. Trust. Honesty. Confidence. Taking the fear out of home improvement. 281-546-8836 or online at oldglorytx.com. The Old Glory Renovations Podcast. Helping you enjoy your renovations. Now, let's get back to Rob and Mike. Guys, thanks for sticking with us. I appreciate it. We're having a good time. I'm talking with uh, Rob Hefner. He's the owner and creator of Old Glory uh, Construction Renovation. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Landry. And what we're going to talk about now, we're going to dig into some of the projects. Because I think you guys are going to be surprised not only at the diversity of projects that they do and offer services for, but the geography is really amazing. You know, I want to start to Rob. I want I want to start this off talking about Susan and well, and the mahogany doors. Yeah, and the mahogany doors. Well, Susan has been a lot of fun to work with. Uh, we went out there. We took the siding off, painted the exterior of the house, did refinished the front door, a thousand and one little things. But as we were doing it, she said one day, "Well, these doors haven't worked in years. They're sliding mahogany doors, four of them across the back of the home." So we got looking at it and said, you know what, we can fix that if you want. We took the, we had to go downtown to buy, buy mahogany. Uh, yeah, raw we, materials. Yeah, the I mean, raw you're material. milling the, your, tr your, your trim guy yeah. is, is recreating a door frame, okay, out of mahogany because this is, I mean, everything, including the expensive doors today, are all pre hung on fabricated it, materials, right? It, it, absolutely. And we bought, uh, two inch by six inch pieces of mahogany, milled them down, cut the channel in them for the glass, rebuilt the doors completely. Now, when we took the doors out from components, from components, we you we, built the door uh, completely. We kept the glass. We kept because they're full glass doors. We kept the glass, but we took it down to just the glass, rebuilt everything around it, and put the doors back together. Now, but, but the frames were built out of mahogany. The, the frames sliding, and it, the runners, metal. right? The front, the the frames and the runners were all mahogany as well. So we had to take out the bottom runner because the structure underneath it had got some water damage, and we had to fix that and then redo that that runner across the bottom and some of them on the sides. But it was really a lot of fun getting into that kind of technical, detailed work. To make something come back together and look better than it did when it was brand well, new. Well, that's furniture building level trim. Okay, that that's that very that much. doesn't happen very much these days. And the fact that you've got that talent on your on your staff is amazing. Now, this is an eighty thousand dollar project, and it's in Alvin. Okay, right. And so you you rebuilt her entire deck and everything on that thing. Well, the deck had uh, it was showing wear. You know, decks don't last forever out here. 
Uh, so we had came out and showed her some composite material that I'm really proud of. That's a different show. But we resurfaced the deck, fixed it where it was, put it all back together. It's absolutely beautiful now. Walking through those newly sliding mahogany doors, looking out across the brand new deck, down over the pool with pasture land in the background, it is just a beautiful, beautiful place. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's move to Cypress, Texas. You're going oh. from Alvin to Cypress, Texas. I want to emphasize that. <laughs> We're going to talk about Tom, okay? Well, I've known Tom for a while, and he called me up and said, Hey, Rob, I'm in a bind. I have a rent house up in Cyprus, and they moved out and left it in really bad shape. How quickly can we get it back together? Uh, it needs new floors. It needs new paint on the walls. we got to paint the cabinets and, and the other miscellaneous stuff, replacing light fixtures and some stuff like that. So we went up there and looked at it and said, Sure, when do you need it? He said, By the 10th of next month. And now, how many weeks did that give you to do this? It gave us uh, right at uh, just under four weeks to do it. Right. But he said he had to have it by the 10th yeah. or it was going to cost him a fortune. Uh, budgets matter. And my client's budgets matter. He needed to get that home back on the market to get it rented out before we get in the middle of the holiday season when it's hard to do that. So he had a timeline he had to meet. He had budgets he had to maintain. So we, it's a rental property. Yeah. It, it, Rob. It, it, it's his business. <laughs> yeah. And it's not earning money if I'm working in it. It's costing money. So Okay. Now, this was a $37,000 budget right. with a hard dead date right. that you had to make, which, in you know, it, without you actually employing these guys, that would actually be an impossible task. But since you have all these people on staff and you control their time, you made it happen. Did you get on time, or was it early? Uh, we finished on the 7th. It, we were three days ahead of schedule with it. It was, I had to spend ex, send some extra people up there. There were two guys that were up there for the entire time, and we'd get a little bit behind, and I'd have to shift somebody else to get up there, but we had a deadline. We're going to meet the deadline. You're a rare duck, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, having control of your resources instead of subcontractors that you're begging to come, I got to get this done, that would not work in that context. But in your in your situation, one, you were able to meet his budget restrictions for a rental property, so he's getting a lot more for his money. He's getting high-quality results and labor, and he's you're meeting his deadlines. I mean, that's amazing. So Now, I would not be willing to do this job in a fully subcontracted environment. That adds a layer of chaos to it that just I'm just not willing to do with. I like having my guys there. It gives us control as a company, control of the customer experience, and that's what we want is to create a positive customer experience through something that, let's be honest, nobody really likes to think about. Well, you're not paying double overhead and profit, too, because you've got your overhead and profit, and then the subcontractor's got his overhead and profit. So you are providing uh, the ability to streamline this stuff and be able to provide hard cash value without sacrificing quality. But it also gives you more control over the end product. That's what the whole business is built around. That's the way we're structured. We want to be able to address those issues, maintain control of the customer experience, maintain the quality standards that we want, and get things done on time. Okay, so we were in Alvin. We were in Alvin. Now we were in Cypress, Texas. Let's go to Galveston. Let's go to Galveston. <laughs> All right. So this is actually uh, a veteran uh, that is being subsidized by a veteran organization called Serve that actually paid for these repairs Correct. to the home. Right. So that her name is Patty. Patty is just a sweetheart. Now she'd lived in that house for a long time, and the she was afraid to use the bathroom there. Because the floor in the bathroom was just wobbly. It spongy. bounced. It, yes. It's spongy. It feels like they're going to fall through, right? Like walking across a trampoline. She just was afraid to use it. She knew there'd been a water leak, and she was worried that the whole area was rotted out. Uh, she'd been living like that for a while because she couldn't find funding. Well, she came across Serve. Uh, it's sctexasheroes.com, a great organization that helps our veterans in the area. And... I went down there to take a look at it. It 
we managed to remove all the flooring, found out what the real problem was. It wasn't near as bad as we thought. Get it all put back together and gave her a bathroom that she's such a sweetheart. She sent us a postcard with everybody that worked on it mentioned by name. Thank you so much. You have changed my life. Okay, so the original estimate that you had provided Surf and to Patty was fifty three hundred. Right. Now, now this is interesting. <laughs> they approved the fifty three hundred. Correct. Okay. Which they are paying for this project for her because of the veteran status. Right. Um, and she didn't have the financial wherewithal to do it herself, which is why this organization exists. Your invoice, your final invoice was forty seven hundred dollars. Remember, I invoice time and material. It's not a fixed rate contract. So I invoice time and material. If I spend five days, that's what you pay for. If I spend five hundred dollars in material, that's what you pay for. So it's it's I'm gonna tell you right now, if there's another contractor <laughs> that I've seen in twenty two years around here that's gonna give money back, I ain't met him. <laughs> but your process, it's not you doing it, it's the process that you've set up. And that way, the consumers are getting full disclosure weekly of exactly what the material costs were that were actually used, the amount of labor that it took to facilitate the installation of that, and then your agreed overhead and profit. And they, they pay weekly. And that, that, so you, this contractor, this other contractor doesn't have 50% of your money. You know, on a project like that, I guarantee it'd be 50% of the money up front, right? Right. And you're just billing on work progress every week. It seems to me like that's a, a smart and safe way to do it. It protects my cash flow. Neither one of us are assuming risk. The, this kind of work is all about risk. So we managed to eliminate that risk through a non-standard process, through a system, instead of just trust in nice words. It's a system that we adhere to that that mitigates that risk and it ensures our customers are always fully informed on what's going on. One thing I've noticed perusing your customer list is you have a lot of CPA and accountants as clients and they absolutely love this process because they've got control and visibility on every penny. Well, Susan, the the first customer we talked about this afternoon or in this segment anyway, uh, she is a forensic accountant. (laughs) <laughs> so, so I was worried when I started showing it to her and that system, the way we put the bid together is why she chose us because oh, she could see exactly what was going to happen and how much it was all going to cost. Well, I can tell you right now, it's unbelievable. Now we're going to close this segment with, uh, we're going to go to, from, we're going to go from Galveston to Nassau Bay. Okay. Now, one of your customers named Jeff, um, rebuilding, uh, his exterior, uh, deck after storm damage it was a thirteen thousand dollar project. Tell me right. about that. We're kind of taking a tour of the area this afternoon, aren't we? From Alvin up to Cypress, down to Galveston, out back up to Nassau Bay. Hey, brother, it's your operating range. Okay, <laughs> that that's pretty impressive, if you ask me. That's a, a lot of windshield time. Some days, uh, Jeff had a deck that had been washed away, and it had been a while, and he just hadn't made a decision on exactly what he wanted to go back with. So went over and took a look at it. It was just dirt down next to the bulkhead, right next to the water. And he wanted a a deck down by the water, a deck overhead with the lower deck extending beneath it, and obviously stairs. Yeah. Uh, We managed to put that in. We came in within $100 of budget uh, on that one, and we were... I think one day over on time, if I remember correctly. Dude, most contractors are weeks overdone. I mean, it's these 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 things are literal fantasies for homeowners. Okay, it, fantasies. You know, cost control, full visibility on every penny for every piece of material and unit cost, uh, controlled uh, on-site management all the time, and they don't leave the job until it's done. That 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 is a total fantasy for a customer I, well i spent so many years in the operations part of the u.s army 
if you say it's going to be done on time, you get it done on time. Yeah, and I better that, know brother. what you need to make it happen to get there. <laughs> it's part of who I am. I can't do it a different way anymore. Well, thanks for you guys hanging out with uh, Mike and Rob. Uh, Old Glory Renovations is the company. Give them a call today if you have a project or a need. 281-546-8836. 281-546-8836. Or you can find them online at oldglorytx.com. We're going to wrap it up for today. We'll see you next week, guys. That's all for this week's Old Glory Renovations podcast. Tune in next week when Mike and Rob help you enjoy your renovations. Find out more at oldglorytx.com. 